What's your view of her in general and of Mrs. Dalloway in particular? I mean, how great was she, do you think? I think she was terrific, actually. I mean, I think that she, she in many ways, reinvented the novel, uh, at, at least put it on a kind of recognisable 20th century track after um, the Victorians and the Edwardians. Um, and uh, the, the great thing with her is, you know, summed up in that declaration, she said, you've got to look within, she said, and, and write about people's consciousness. Um, uh, as, as surrounded by wonderful everyday detail. Um, and that's she made what it she much does. easier for the reader than Joyce did, didn't she? I mean, her books are easier than... Certainly, certainly. Um, though she admired greatly um, the first parts of Ulysses, she said the graveyard scene in Ulysses was exactly the kind of thing she wanted to write. But uh, as the, that novel went on, she, she came to hate it, um, and she deplored its sexiness and so on. But she did, she, she did admire the inwardness um, of, 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 of Joyce, but she took it further than him. Um, and uh, I mean, that, that, that's her great thing, presenting people um, in, uh, uh, with their thoughts and so on, exposed on the page. Um, and wonderfully so, terrific intimacy with what's going on inside people's heads. At the same time, uh, uh, giving you them in response to terrific terrific uh, everyday detail um, uh, Mrs. Dalloway is set in London and you get this tremendous sense um, of, of 1920s London. Um, now it, 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 a lot of it is very posh London and uh, you know that you can complain about Virginia Woolf's obsession with you know the, the, the upper bourgeoisie and the aristocracy and posh intellectuals and so on and so on. Um, but, but leaving that aside I mean the, 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 the way in which she presents people within uh, within a terrifically realised um, uh, so social context. It's not surprising she admired a, a lot of um, early, uh, modernist painters like Cézanne. I mean, her, the colour in her work is terrific. Um, and, and that's what's good about her. Now, of course, um, uh, sh sh she did go mad. Uh, of course she did. Um, but there's no sign, uh, I think, of that madness in Mrs. Dalloway, like there is in some novels. There are some of the early novels where you think she was mad writing this passage. It's kind of frenzied and insane. Of course, insane. she had bouts of madness. All she the way she certainly it. did. And, and she did say uh, about writing Mrs. Dalloway that it hurt her head. Um, she was thinking of the, the way in which she kind of weaves things together, a terrific weaving process. Um, uh, the, the detail is extraordinary in the way in which she puts it all together. Uh, that's the sense in which it hurt her head. It's not that she was going bonkers at the time, uh, unhappily. Uh, the, I mean, there are signs uh, of, 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 of her um, kind of uh, melancholy and her obsession with with, with, with death through, through the novel. Um, and, you know, she's, she's a person who um, uh, will uh, have a character look, look at her bread knife um, and think ab about killing herself and so on. And not accidentally, this novel, Mrs. Dalloway, opens with Mrs. Dalloway um, coming through um, uh, the door of her house into the London street and thinking um, of what it was like to run down the, the beach uh, into the water and feeling the kiss of the wave, which is an extraordinary kind of memory, an extraordinary kind of feeling. But you know, you can't help thinking of that, of the way in which uh, eventually she would walk into the, the River Thames and, and, and drown herself. Yeah. On that detail, it, when you did an introduction to, uh, I think, the Vintage Classics edition, uh, you, you quote a passage. Um, Quite early on, in people's eyes, in the swing, tramp and trudge, in the bellow and uproar, the carriages, motor cars, omnibuses, vans, sandwich men shuffling and swinging, brass bands, barrel organs, etc., etc. I mean, that way of bring, bringing London to life. And you talk about the wonderful radical thinginess of, and, and that's, it's that, isn't it? That contrast between that on the one hand and the fact that people's impressions, the, the, a character's impressions of it are also skew, skewed and slightly... 
Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. And of course, it is true that um, the, the reality of, of, of London is um, uh, very threatening. That is to say, um, Mrs. Dalloway, um, thinking about cars on the street, is also thinking about being run over by them. Um, and this novel has got a character um, who, who is mad, um, Septimus Warren Smith, who um, is a victim of the war, it's a very war conscious uh, book, um, and, and he, he um, re represents, as it were, somebody who's having kind of nightmares and bad dreams about the war um, and eventually of course um, he falls through a window there's some debate about whether he's kind of pushed or or jumped or, or whatever he's, he's obsessed by a, a, a doctor uh, who visits him anyway he falls through his head on the railings and the railing a, a spike goes up through him and mrs dalloway when she hears about this she feels at, at our party she feels that spike going up through her and in a sense it represents the way in which um, Virginia Woolf, this novel and all her novels are as it were penetrated, they're pierced, pierced by grief, um, especially brought on by the memory of the First World War and, and, and men she knew who had died um, and, and all of that and a whole nation of men who had died um, and uh, she is pierced she is pierced um, with, with, with grief as Mrs Dalloway is pierced um, by that uh, talking hearing of that talk of the of the railing um, and in, in that sense um, uh, the, 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 what is kind of extraordinary uh, it seems to me is is the way in which um, v Virginia Woolf makes you uh, uh, aware of life, <laughs> the living, the living and being alive, uh, though conscious of and surrounded all the time by talk of death and actual death. And of course, this is one of the great post-First World War novels. It, it, it's very striking how so much modernist fiction is actually uh, written at this moment, like Ellis Wasteland and, 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 and so on. And this is one of the great ones. But the, what's, what's very striking is it's not cast down in that melancholy. And it gives us, in a sense, a, a person triumphing. There she was. Yeah. There she was. It's, is the it's, last it's, word. And the novel gives you, gives you this, this thereness. Um, of, of a living person, living, as it were, triumphantly in the face of mortality. I mean, it is a novel, in a way, about what it feels like to be alive, isn't it? I mean, and the balance between sanity and insanity being really quite small, so that you see Mrs. Dalloway on the one hand and Septimus on the other, but, but they're not as, as unalike as we might think. Do you, do you agree with that? That, they're both, that, that, that there is a sort of delicate balance between the two, between insanity and insanity, she's suggesting. Not so much sanity and insanity, it seems to me, um, as um, uh, between melancholy um, and, uh, and brightness. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's the, the, the axis of, of, of the, this fiction. Um, it is extraordinarily melancholic at the same time as being extraordinarily alive. Um, and uh, it marks it out. It's a kind of a novel of a survivor, a survivor um, of the terrible traumas um, of the First World War. A woman, not a man. You know, there are plenty of soldier fiction, um, of people who actually came through um, the, the trenches and all the rest of it. Um, uh, she, she, she's an onlooker as, as, as a woman. But what an onlooker um, at this extraordinary um, cultural moment. Yes. And that whole mock heroic thing, I suppose, um, which is played with in Ulysses, goes further with Mrs. Dalloway, which is deliberately Mrs. Dalloway, isn't it? And you have a, a heroine, and, and the main thing she's doing is giving a party. And, uh, and she is indeed Mrs. Dalloway, um, and, um, and that is deliberate, because, of course, um, Virginia Woolf is a feminist, um, and, and a, a strong feminist, um, and it's very important that she should be presenting the, 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 her heroine um, a, as a married woman, uh, a, a woman who is up against the male world. Um, and, you know, she's surrounded by um, all of these kind of, um, if, if, if you like, ruling class males. I mean, her husband is a member of the cabinet and, 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 and so on. And, uh, OK, so there are potent women, women who do things backstage in this novel. They, 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 they are powers behind the, the, the 
parliamentary throne and all the rest of it. Um, but this is a woman's story within a very male world. And of course, that male world, this is one of the things that obsesses with Julian Wolf, that male world is a world that has sent um, so many boys um, to their to death. death. Um, was it, I think it was J. Hillis Miller who said that for Virginia Woolf a, the, a novel was the place of death made visible or some remark. So that in a way is what you're <laughs> talking about with uh -huh, the, uh -huh. the melancholy. But, but I suppose, the, and there she was, it does end on a slightly upbeat note, Mrs. Dell. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. And, and, and that, is its, that is its point, as it were, um, the, uh, the continuing presence um, of, 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 of the person. Um, d despite uh, despite everything, you know, and and uh, th there are signs all around um, of, um, of, of, uh, of 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 death. Um, you know, there's a the wonderful um, uh, in incident where um, Mrs. Dalloway sees a, 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 a troop of soldiers um, g going off um, to the cenotaph, um, that First World War m memorial. You're, you're very conscious um, um, of. Um, oh, bad things, um, uh, d mortal things out there. I mean, there's this very interesting episode, isn't there, with, uh, with the, the, the guy who's come back from India and he has been some sort of failure um, out there uh, and he comes yeah, in... He wants to marry her. Yeah, to marry. yeah, right. Always, he's in love with her. Um, and uh, he... he um, uh, he, he, a wonderful scene um, where he comes and he watches her um, uh, sewing her her dress, um, and uh, he, he he has a penknife <laughs> which he can't open, and so on. Um, it's, it's a kind of in, indication of kind of failed phallic power as, of this guy. Meanwhile, she is triumphantly kind of uh, sewing and cutting and so on, and wielding these kind of male phallic implements, needles and scissors and so on, um, doing it very quietly while she does a very woman thing, um, s sewing and, and, and cutting her, her dress. Um, and uh, 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 where has he come from? He's come from India. He's come from out there. He's he's a colonial administrator. Lots of those in Virginia Woolf's um, uh, novels, and he's had some sort of failure. Um, all the uh, she's alive. She's alive. Um, and um, and uh, triumphant. He, he is a complete failure. Can't open his penknife. Okay. Yeah. And and he represents, as it were, um, the male yeah. world, male colonialism, and so on.